Shalom all, shalom all. Welcome back to this channel. I'm happy to have you here again. I'm Apostle Claudia Morgan Senior, and indeed it is a privilege to be here with you to share or to look into the word of the Lord, to hear what the Lord will say to us today by means of the Ruach, by means of the Spirit. I pray you are well and, uh, you know, the, you are enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Each day is a, a great blessing. The gift of life is such a great blessing that we should never take for granted. Okay, so today I am on and uh, I will be sharing with you a vision the Lord gave me last October 2022. I actually shared with a few people before, but a few days back, in last week, the Lord impressed it upon my spirit to share with his people. And as people of God, we need to be more aware um, of what is happening around us. We need to have a higher level of consciousness of what is happening around us in the world we live in. And we also need to understand the impact of these activities things that are happening, how it affects and impact the body of Messiah. So today, contrary to what many may believe, and I'm talking to those who consider themselves to be very religious people, but at the same time, they are denying the spirit of the Lord that is still active in this time. They are still denying the spirit of the Lord that is still active in this time. Um, the prophecy from the prophet Joel is still relevant today and we see the apostle Paul makes reference to the text in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 and he says in the last days God says I will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will have dreams or your old men will dream dreams and I want to quickly add that the Lord is not giving a new word. It's not that you're hearing a new word from the Lord. Any prophetic word given must line up with scripture. And so any person who comes to you with a word that does not line up with the word of God, you need to be careful. You need to be wary of those persons. In the time of the prophets of Israel there was never a time they would these prophets would come out with a word that did not line up with with the Torah right and meaning the first five books of the Bible God's instruction that he gave to Israel right God always called out the prophets um, to give a rebuke for breaking covenant or for giving a word of hope based on covenant. It is always on those two principles that the prophets would come out and whatever they say normally lines up with scripture. And you would have heard me said on many occasions um, as it relates to scripture that we need to be like the Berians. Who are the Berians? So the Berians were a, a group of noble, group of um, Jewish people who carefully examined the teachings of the Apostle Paul, right? They carefully examined the teachings of the Apostle Paul and what they would do is to compare what Paul would have been teaching to them, compare it to the Old Testament scripture because in truth, that was a scripture that was available in their times. And so I pray that by means of the Spirit, we will have that earnest discernment in us to be like the Berians who have a deep desire or passion for understanding the word of the Lord. Amen. And so that is my encouragement as we look at scripture and as we study scripture. So let me share the vision the Lord gave me in October 2022. And before I do so, I just want to pray over this session right now. 
Avino Malkeno, our Father, our King, we thank you for this moment you have given us, Lord. We thank you for this moment in time when we can appear in your presence to, to hear what you will say to us, when we can come before you, Father, to seek forgiveness and cleansing, when we can come before you as we repent of our sins. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for this moment. And even as I come out to, to share this word, this vision that you have given me a while back, but now is the time you want me to share it so others can hear. I pray that by means of the rock, that you will cover this word, that you will cover this word, Lord, and that you will draw those whom you want to hear this word to hear and that the word will do a work in our hearts and as a result of this we will be drawn closer to you thank you father as we commit this word to you in the name of yeshua the messiah amen amen okay so all right october 22 it was as i slept in the far distance, I saw a rider on a black horse coming at full speed. It was coming at full speed and it was coming in my direction. And in the vision, I saw an, an open portal and the rider was about, or the horse was about to make its entrance through the portal I saw and I heard myself in the realm of the spirit saying you are not coming in here you are not coming in here you are not coming in here it was really a quick scary moment and I woke up right I remember in the morning I was telling my husband and he said to me that he heard me but he didn't understand what I was saying and that has been the case so often when the Spirit of the Lord would speak to me, um, you know, um, sometimes he really doesn't understand. But as I walk out of the vision, immediately my mind went back to the block black horse that the apostle john saw in the book of revelation in revelation chapter 6 and i want to read i'm gonna be reading that um text in a few minutes right we're gonna be talking about 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 this and what is the lord saying is he bringing a new word no he's not and we're going to go into scripture now to prove that he is not giving a new word he is giving us he is he he wants us to hear something that is already in scripture but maybe we are just not paying attention to so horses are always mentioned in scripture and horses in the bible often represents god's activities on the earth it basically represents warfare right Horses are agents of God's wrath and vengeance against sinful man. Let us understand this, that God is a just God and he will bring judgment as is necessary. But at the same time, he will bring judgment upon mankind. He will not, he will not bring judgment upon mankind without giving a warning. That's exactly what happened what he did in Egypt, right? We talked about Egypt last week in our study. We talked about the plagues, the first seven plagues that were released in Egypt. And we talk about the fact that every one of those plagues was a representative of the God that the people of Egypt actually worship, right? And so what we saw coming out was that it was a, it was a war. It was a mighty war against the gods, the, the God of heaven and earth and the gods of Egypt, right? But even then, God did not just go ahead to release those plagues, right? He used Moses and Aaron to take the word to Pharaoh. Um, you are to let my people go free so that they can worship me. And uh, God had given to the, him, Pharaoh, that is more than enough time to redeem himself, to let the Israelites go free, but he refused, right? So that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened, and that's what he did. Also, in the time of Noah and the flood, Noah, we learned, preached for 
think it was 120 years. He gave man time to repent, right? In the time of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, we saw also Abraham praying, making intercession for the people to say, God, if there's 50 people, righteous people, and then it come down all the way to 10, and even then, couldn't find 10 righteous people. So the point I'm making is, God is always sending a warning. He will always send his warning before anything happens, right? And so although we have been forewarned in scripture many times on activities to come, I believe that, um, and I also pray, right, that the word will reach the hearts of all people and we will pay attention to the times and the seasons that we are operating in as we look into the word of God. And I'm going to be reading from Zechariah chapter 6, 1 through 8. It says, um, it says, okay, I looked up again and there before me were four chariots coming out from between two mountains, mountains of bronze. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white and the fourth dappled, all of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my lords? The angel answered me, these are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The one with the black horses is going to the north. The one with the white is going to the west and the one with the dappled horse is going to the south. Then the, then the, when the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go through the earth. And he said, go through out the earth. So they went through the earth. Then he called to me, look, those going toward the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. So in the vision, the Lord specifically showed me a rider. On a black horse. Amen. The rider on the black horse, the color black in scripture represents deep distress and mourning. I want us to be paying attention to this. The color black in scripture represents deep distress and mourning. In Job chapter 2 verse 28, it represents mourning. And I would love for you to just go, just, just take note and you can read these texts for yourself. In Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2, it represents famine. In Lamentations chapter 5, verse 10, it represents judgment and sin. And in Jude verse 13, it represents death and the grave. The color black in scripture does not carry a very, very good note or good impression as we see coming out of the text. All right. Um, in Revelation chapter 6, I want to read this now. It says, I watched as the Lamb opened the, the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, come. I looked. And there before me was a white horse, its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given the power to take peace from the earth, and to make them slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. Already we would have seen the similarities of the horses in the book of um, Zechariah 
and in Revelation. So it says the rider was holding a pair of scale in his hands. And he said, And I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Clearly, we see that this text is speaking to economic hardship and disaster. That's what the text is speaking to. The scales also suggest that there probably would be ration, I mean, a shortage of food, basically, yes. If there's going to be a famine, then naturally there's going to be shortage of food. And uh, it, it specifically speaks to barley and wheat. And in the ancient world, barley and wheat was considered poor people's food. Food. I want you to get this. It was considered poor people's food, and uh, and and we would see selling at extremely high and extravagant prices, right? So people, the Bible says, people would spend an entire day's wages for just enough food to keep them alive. As I mentioned about wheat and barley. It came back to my memory, the story of Ruth and Naomi. It's a good reminder of what the poor looked like in scripture. Because in Leviticus chapter 23, we read that God gave to Moses instructions to give Israel to remember the poor, remember the needy. So when you reap your harvest in your field and, and forget a sheep in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be there for this. It shall be there. For the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Okay, so that is what barley and wheat in scripture speaks to the poor and the needy. But it also says, don't waste the olive oil and wine. And olive oil and wine symbolize luxurious items, right? that were exclusive domains of the rich but this does not say that they would not be impacted right because even if you're rich and there is a famine even if you're rich and there is a famine in the land it means that what you have is going to be depleted so the overall text as we see it speaks to economic famine and hardship right and famine as we know it can lead to death we have seen that happen before and i'm gonna bring up i'm gonna bring up a scripture to prove that it has happened before and what has happened before it will also happen again the natural result of war right um famine when there is war then we can also expect famine and so we see that the second horseman the one on the red represents war and bloodshed that's what it says right then another horse came out a fiery red one its rider was given power to take to take peace from the earth and to make them slay each other to him was given a large sword we're talking about war and bloodshed here Right. And so naturally, there's going to be different layers of impact when there is a famine and when there is war. And so the third horse is black. And this, it, it clearly represents, as the scripture says, famine. And we know that in St. Matthew chapter 24, Yeshua taught a lot on the end of time. He says that be aware of these times right nation will rise up against nation during the tribulation and individuals against individuals it's gonna be a time of murder it's a time of assassination it's a time of bloodshed it's a time of revolution and it's going to be a time of war all of these things is going to be happening and has been happening and will continue to happen as a matter of fact it will escalate that's what we're going to be seeing an escalation of all of these things right so the first famine that we read about in scripture took place um we read that in the book of genesis right it tells about the famine in israel and 
how God's people, they had to go down into Egypt because of the famine. There was provision in Egypt. And what I want to say to you today as you listen, God will always make provision for his people, but you need to get under his coverage. He is calling you to come under his coverage. Amen. In the time of Elijah, there was a famine in Samaria. 2 Kings chapter 6, 25, it tells us that there was a great famine in the city. And this famine lasted so long that it says a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekel of silver and a quarter of cab of seed pods for five shekels. I really wanted to research to see the value, the equivalent of what that would be today. But we can imagine it would have been extremely expensive. So the famine was also so great, it says that people basically were eating each other. So it, you can read that um, Second Kings chapter 6. There's a powerful story there, right? Um, so what we see, the point is, what has happened before will happen again, right? Um, and so we need to take note of an instruction that Yeshua gave to his disciples or his Talmudim regarding the signs of the time, the signs of the end time, right? In St. Matthew chapter 24, I just make reference to that. It says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such thing must happen. It's not a maybe. Such things must happen happened but the end is still to come right so people of god you need to be prepared for this and uh, you know there's a lot of argument on with, the truth is many persons in the body of messiah is not prepared for what is to come and i believe this is a reminder that the spirit of the lord want me to come out to say to you you are to remember be aware of these things it is going to happen it is not a maybe it must happen. It must happen. But what we must remember, in spite of all that is happening, the end is still to come. It says, nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. We just talk about famines. An earthquake in various places. On the landscape, in our time, we, on, the, on the international news, a lot of these things are happening. Right, And he said, all these are the beginning of birth pains. And uh, some, revel some translation says birth pangs. All of these things are beginning of birth pains. Do you know when for those who are mothers out there? I'm a mother myself, right? And when it is time to give birth, when you get into that period there when it is about time for you to make your delivery to deliver your child into this earth i mean the pain and the the turmoil the struggle that you go, go through the birth pangs the birth pains and they come in intervals and they are slow until they begin to improve and they begin to improve and it begins to get worse it is the same thing that is happening here right and so we can all admit that we live in a world today Many people still are asking the question, why did Ukraine, what is this Ukraine war about? What, what is this war with Ukraine about? Why, why is it Russia who taking upon themselves to, 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 to brutalize so many people? Why? Right? The question is being asked. And we can also admit that the cost of living the cost of inflation is getting out of hand earlier the text mentioned i, I made the point that barley and wheat speaks to the poor and oil and wine to the rich but everybody as it is now complaining about the high cost of living the high cost of food price the high cost of electricity the high cost of petrol the high cost of absolutely everything it's like everybody is feeling it Right. But we can we can also admit that even since COVID came, there has been a serious change on the landscape, not only physically, but even so more spiritually. 
even so more spiritually so the signs of the time are everywhere and uh, I, I like the reading from Luke chapter 21 10 to 11 it says nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom right there will be earthquake famines and pestilence in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven right he said when these things begin to take place stand up and lift up your heads now is not the time to be giving in now is not the time to be faint-hearted now is not the time to be thrown in the towel now is not the time to be giving up the instructions to, to the to the body of believers is that you are to stand up lift up your heads because your redemption draw is drawing near Yeshua was speaking to his Jewish people. But you don't have to feel excluded. It doesn't exclude anyone. It affects all people, all nation, all tribe, all language. It doesn't matter where you fall. Today, the instruction is stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. St. Luke chapter 21, 10 through 11. And so... This is the encouragement I want to leave with you today. As I saw it in the realm of the spirit, that rider on the black horse coming at full speed, you need to begin to, 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 to get, you know, sometimes we need to understand that how the spirit work, how God's spirit work. And when he gives a revelation, what do you do with it? So for weeks, I have been praying on this. For weeks, I have been making decoration. For weeks, I have been covering. For weeks, I have been repenting for nations. For, for weeks, I have been repenting for myself, for family, for nations, for the body of Messiah, for Israel, for everybody. Just praying over everybody, praying over everybody, praying over everybody. And so I want to raise two points as I close this, because this was never meant to be really long right? The encouragement for you today is to repent and make Teshuvah to return to God. God will only bring judgment on the nations when nations break covenant and are moving away from him. That's when judgment is going to come, right? So if we repent, and if we turn, and I like the Hebrew word for repentance, it's teshuva, is to, is to, it is to, 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 to go back, to make, to turn around and return to God. Return to the God of our, our fathers, return to the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's the first thing we need to do. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14, he says, if my people, and he was speaking to Israel specifically, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, he said, I will hear from heaven. But it starts with repentance. It starts with a turning around. It starts with acknowledging that we are moving further and further and further away from God. And we need to come back to God. We need to return to him. That's the first thing we need to do. He said, I will turn. But there is something Israel must do. There is something whether um, physical Israel or spiritual Israel must do, and it is to repent. Okay? Number two point. I want to say this to you. Do not be alarmed by the things happening around you. Be aware of the signs. Okay? St. Matthew chapter 24. Read that chapter. Be aware of the signs. And lift up your ha your heads. Lift up your heads. Your redemption is at hand. We are in the book of Exodus study. And we see yesterday's reading. It speaks about the deliverance of Egypt, of, of Israel out of Egypt. Yeah? Um, the blood had to be shed. And God says, post the blood upon the door. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It's not that God didn't know where the Israelites were. He knew. Right? He knew. But he said, 
put the blood upon the door. Today, the question is, is the blood of Messiah on the door of your heart? Have you yet accepted him as Lord and Savior? When the children of Israel went down into Egypt as a result of the famine, when God unleashed the plagues on the land, Israel lived in a place called Goshen. And when the plagues hit, the plague of darkness, it is said that the darkness was so thick. It was a spiritual darkness. The darkness was so thick that you could feel it, basically feel it. Right? But while darkness was in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. I feel today you need to get into Goshen, into that place of light. You need to be, you need to abide in the light, right? Yeshua said, if you abide in me and my word, my instructions, my teachings, my teachings for life abide in you. You will bring forth much fruit and fruits that will remain. The third point, there is in Habakkuk, yes, there's a text that I love in that um, book. And it talks about, it talks about, um, I, I'm trying to find it. It's Habakkuk chapter three. Yes, here it is. It talks about what the hope there that 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 um chapter 3 verse um 17 right so when famine is on the land it's gonna be hard times for some people so i want to encourage you with this verse from habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 through 18 it says when hardship come when famine is here when you're not able to buy, uh, you know, the, the services and, and the products and stuff that you need. He says, in the time of Israel, he says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God, my Savior. So we are learning here that as we understand the times and the seasons, we need to learn to rejoice in the God of our salvation. We need to rejoice in the God of our eternal hope. Because why, why we need to rejoice? Let me tell you why we can rejoice. We can rejoice because according to many Bible prophecies, the solution to the problems of needs and luck and everything encounter will come to an end when the kingdom of God appears, right? When, when Yeshua returns and establishes throne on this earth, on this earth, there will be no lack. There will be no lack. And in, in Re Revelation chapter 21, it says that there will be no lack right there will be no need there will be no sickness there will be no pain there will be no more dying there will be no tears because all tears will be wiped away praise the lord people of god this is our hope this is our hope and so as i share the word I want you to rest on the promises of God. We can rest on the promise because Yeshua says in St. Matthew chapter 28, 20, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. But remember, you need to remember your covenant walk and you need to stay in covenant and stay under his covering. May God bless you. And if this word blesses your heart, I encourage you to share it with your contacts, share it on your social media platforms. And not only that, I'm asking you also to continue sub to subscribe to the channel. And remember, you only do it once. We only subscribe once, but um, I'm going to ask you to like, to, um, to like, touch the notification bell for other uploads. And may you have a great day. This week, you can walk with confidence knowing that God is with you. He said, I am with you always, always to the very end of the age. We're not there yet. And he will remain with us. 
may God bless you richly. Thanks for watching.